what's up guys welcome back to genius tennis the child's going to replace her tennis coach and in this video i'm going to teach you how to hit a forehand slice before we get into that this video brought to you by none other than us we now have an online store online apparel so if you want to support the channel support the program go ahead and go to the shop link in the description but anyways going to the video so big recommendation here you want to learn how to volley before you learn how to slice okay volleying is an absolute prerequisite to slicing we have a forehand volley already here on the channel up in the upper right corner of the screen you should see popping up right now because slices are literally just longer volleys so if you have your volleys down learning how to slice will be completely effortless but with that being said I will be explaining slices in their entirety in this video. Not only am I gonna teach you the regular slice, but I'm also gonna teach you how to hit these high slices that like a lot of people get these, they don't know what to do with them at all. I'm also gonna teach you how to control direction, how to control the depth of your slices, and I'm gonna teach you how to amplify your slices, how to hit them even harder, but keep them in while adding massive spin. So fundamental thing about slices here slices have a low power threshold power threshold means how hard can you hit the ball before it goes out so having a low power threshold means that it's very easy to hit your slices out so the key here is how can we reduce the power of the slice so that it doesn't go out and it's easy is by using just your forearm not your entire arm okay and that's exactly what we do while we're volleying are you going to use a little bit more arm than you do when you're volleying for slices? Yes, but you're never going to have a straight arm like when you're hitting your topspin forehand and your topspin backhand. In those videos I instructed you, keep your arm straight, keep your arm straight. In the volley video I told you, just use your forearm, hug your upper arm, not super tight, but it's all forearm. And you're going to be using a little bit more when we slice, but it's still not going to be a straight arm like when you're hitting topspin ground strokes. Now another thing, as you've noticed, the slice is a stroke where you're swinging down. And the question is, why are we swinging down? More importantly, how are we swinging down and the ball is still going up, okay? So here's what's going on. Every single stroke has a certain way that you set the grip, right? For topspin ground strokes, you get a topspin grip that closes the racket face. Every time you hit the ball, you want to meet it at a constant angle. So if we get a grip that closes the racket face, you have to swing up. You can also make your top spin forehand flatter. So how do we get back that angle? How do we restore the angle? We swing straighter, okay? Now for slices, we have a grip that opens up the racket face. So we have to swing down, but here's the problem. What happens if we swing straight down, the ball doesn't even go over the net, okay? Well, let's try the other solution that we knew, which is what we use for top spin ground strokes, which is to swing up. Okay, well now the ball, literally hits the fence okay I don't know if you guys heard that but the ball literally hit the fence so what's the solution here we go down and up exactly what we do for the volleys so again this is still the introduction here I'm not separating the steps yet this is just introduction to the mechanisms of what's going on with the slice what's going on and again it's the same thing that happens with the forehand volley and the backhand volley what's going on is you're chopping down and then you're pushing up you chop down and you start pushing up while your racket's still going down. You start pushing up here, but you don't see it until later. What's going on is the racket's decreasing at a decreasing rate, okay? Some of you guys who are in calculus and physics know what that means, but it basically, just because the racket's traveling down doesn't mean it's not applying force up. This is the solution to be able to restore the angle because our racket face is so open, but not hit it in the net, and alternatively also not hit it out. So then, that's why every single slice is down and then up, okay? Down and up. Down and up. Both those shots went in. But that's the big picture, that's the intro, that's the summary of the mechanism that's going on here. Now let's get into actually learning the stroke itself. All right, every single stroke in the entire sport of tennis is only three steps. Set up, racket back, and swing with an upper body component where the actual swing happens and a lower body component where you shift your weight to the ball and stay grounded. Let's get started with step one, setup. Step one setup is where you set your grip in your wrist. Your grip is how you're holding the racket in your hand. I'm not changing my hand, I'm just changing the racket. Big beginner mistake is they change the wrist as well as the racket. Obviously, if you change your wrist, you change the racket. Don't do that. When you're setting your grip, you're just changing the racket and your wrist 
A lot of pros will tell you pronate your wrist or carve the wrist or brush the ball. No, your wrist can move in three directions, bending, twisting, waving. You want to practice that. You want to feel it out, bending, twisting, waving, okay? The reason that you set your grip and wrist and setup is because your grip and wrist affect the closure or opening of the racket face. And the closure or opening of the racket face determines what kind of spin you will produce. And the kind of spin you will produce defines the stroke. What are we hitting? Slice forehand. There you go. Spin defines the stroke, okay? So let's go ahead and start with setting the grip. So here's how you know what grip will produce what spin. This is called the palm face test. And the reason it's appropriate name, you compare your hand to your racket face. If your hand and your racket face are the same and you grab this as a flat grip, if your racket face is open to your hand and you grab this as a slice grip, and your if your racket face is closed to your hand and you grab this is a top spin grip. Again, I'm not changing the hand, I'm just changing the racket. Okay? Slice forehand, guess what kind of grip we're getting? We're getting a slice grip of 10 degrees. Same grip that we got for our forehand volley, okay? Now for the wrist, okay? We set the grip, now it's time to set the wrist, okay? Again, your wrist can bend, twist, wave. Here's what we're gonna do. It's the same wrist that you use for the forehand volley. You're gonna twist right, you're gonna wave up, and you're gonna bend back, and you're gonna lock. Just like the forehand and the backhand volley use the same grip and wrist, the forehand and the backhand slice use the same grip and wrist. Obviously, as you get better and better, you can get your own custom grip and wrist that feels appropriate for you and the gear that you're using. But as a beginner lesson, as the first time slice, do not worry about it. You use the same grip and same wrist for the forehand and the backhand slice, okay? And that's all there is to step one setup. Make sure, again, you lock this wrist. You keep this wrist. You don't change it, okay? And then you can mount the racket on your left hand. This is your grip changing mechanism, but it's also a habit to keep it here. It's also how you set your racket for the backhand volley and the backhand slice. Again, this, is, this left hand here is a mount. It would be way harder if you just left your arm up here. So you never know if you're gonna get a forehand or a backhand slice, so make sure this left hand is on the neck of the racket always. And you never know if you're gonna switch between your slice ground strokes and your topspin ground strokes. So make sure this left hand is on the neck of the racket, okay? My wrist hasn't changed. I only just aim my forearm down, okay? And that's all there is to step one setup. Also make sure you have a wide open stance. You always wanna have a wide open stance. Make sure that it's wide enough so that these quads are tight and the heels lift off the ground. And that's all there is to step one setup. Now let's move into step two, racket back. All right, now step two, racket back. Again, since the forehand slice is basically identical to the forehand volley, racket back is basically going to be identical except for the lower body, okay? So given that this is a ground stroke now and we're all the way at the baseline, we're not at the net, now the amount of power that we supply into the ball matters. The question is, how do we supply a power amount enough appropriate for the slice, unlike like I said in the intro, your top spin ground strokes so that the ball doesn't actually go out. And what we're gonna do with our lower body here is something special, I kinda just did it there, called a sliding close stance. Video up in the upper right corner, if you go check it out, it tells you all of the footwork in tennis and this is one of them and it really goes into detail about that stance, but I'm also gonna talk about it in good detail here. Check out that video and go to that timestamp so you can learn more about it. But basically, What's gonna happen is, we're not looking at the upper body here, just look at my feet, okay? You're gonna step forwards, and when we get to the swing, you're going to swing and slide back at the same time. So it's a, it's a dynamic stance, okay? You swing and slide at the same time, okay? So what's gonna happen is, let's go back to the upper body, okay? Rack it back is forearm beside you and turn your body. You can also execute the forehand slice in open stance, okay? So you can choose a sliding slow stance or the regular open stance where you shift your weight from right to left. Both of those are fine, but rack it back is forearm beside you and turn your body. Make sure you are not waving completely parallel to the ground. This, the beginner mistakes for the forehand slice are the same beginner mistakes for the forehand volley, okay? So make sure you're not waving parallel to the ground and make sure you're not waving straight up. You want this 45 degree wave set so that you can get underneath the ball and so that you don't lose directional control because that's what happens if you are waved completely horizontal, now you can't get underneath the ball and if you wave completely vertical, now you have no directional control, okay? So make sure you have this 45 degree wave and you turn your body as well as bring your arm back, okay? So it's arm to the side in front of you. Look at where my forearm is pointed forwards and to the right, not directly to the right, okay? You can take it a little bit further back just to get more power later. This is something that I said you didn't wanna do for volleys, but you can do it for slices, okay? So then you turn your body 
a little bit more than if you would hit a volley. And that's, that's literally all there is to step to rack it back. You can choose to be open stance and shift weight to the right, or you can choose to step forward. And as you can see, my foot, it went straight ahead, okay? So my foot's straight ahead. If you choose to do the sliding open stance, then you bring your foot forward, and what happens is it causes your body to face to the right, okay? Now, step three, the swing. Like I said in the volley video, there's two forces acting here, okay? You're chopping down, pushing up, chopping down, pushing up, okay? You're gonna chop down and push up. You're gonna treat it like a low volley, okay? So the moment of impact for the forehand slice is very low, just like the moment of impact for the two-handed backhand is very low, okay? As you know, there's a low volley, there's a medium volley, and then there's a high volley. You never want to hit any slices medium height from all the way back here. If you're hitting a slice ground stroke all the way back here, all of your slices should be low. That's the only way you're going to be able to put power into the shot. The lower the ball is, the more room there is for your arm to accelerate down. However, the ball's medium height. Now, not only is it hard to get underneath the ball, but you don't have that much length to accelerate, okay? So side camera here, look at this medium height versus low height, okay? Low height, my racket starts high, then it goes all the way down and pushes up. Medium height, it is shorter, okay? Can you send it over? Yeah, but it's harder and requires more force. So if you have the opportunity to let your slices drop, that's where you want to take them, okay? So again, it's chop down, push up, chop down, push up, okay? Chop down, push up, chop down, push up, okay? So for these, again, I want you to be in a closed stance and you can use the regular closed stance or you can use the sliding closed stance. The mechanism behind the sliding closed stance is, again, we're trying to find ways to incrementally add power to the slice without overpowering it, it's like we're able to do with our top spin ground strokes, but we can't just throw our arm at the ball for slice ground strokes. So what this stance mechanism is, is once we're in this half open stance from the first step, that's the first part of the sliding closed stance. Now we rotate our hips back, which gives us more room to swing, but we start our swing at the same time. So we increase the total length of our swing by rotating our hips back. The special thing about slicing is, again, they're not a strong shot and you want to take them on the rise. So that's the final way that we can add more power to the slice is simply the ball timing. There's three ball timings in the air, on the rise, on the fall, okay? You want to take your slices on the rise so you barely have to put a lot of power into them, okay? You barely have to put a lot of power into the stroke so that it, it takes it more off of you. And it allows you to send the ball deeper without trying too hard with your arm and then sending the ball out. Leverage power when it comes to increasing slice strength. When we go into closed tense with the slice, instead of taking one foot back and the other foot in front like we do for the backhand, again, for the backhand, it's left foot back, right foot in front. We don't just step forward and take it on the rise. Now, if you're going to go into closed stance for the slice, it's always because you're moving forward. Closed stance, stepping forward is always a mechanism of approaching into the court. Regular closed stance always means just keeping your average position but changing your stance. Again, if you're gonna keep your position but just change your stance for the slice, that's when you're gonna use the sliding closed stance where you take your foot in front and then you take it on the fall and then slide the foot. And finally, if the ball bounces really deep and it's forcing you to take it on the rise, then you can stay in open stance, okay? So here's the three situations here. You're taking the ball on the fall. Then you use a sliding close stance. You're taking the ball on the rise, but you have to go to it. Then you use a close stance, but you close forwards. So it's a close and open stance. And then final situation, the ball's already bouncing really deep and forcing you to take it on the rise. That's when you use a regular open stance. So those are the three different lower bodies you're gonna use three different stances slash dynamic stances you're gonna use. But as far as the swing goes, it's as usual, chop down, push up, chop down, push up. That's just me showing you the motion, but in reality, you're starting to push up right after you start chopping down here, but you don't see the racket come up until later. And again, just because the racket's traveling down doesn't mean it's not applying force up. Chop down, push up. When you make contact with the ball, allow your wrist to twist open as you make contact with the ball. Keyword here, allow, don't, 
twist your wrist open before you make contact with the ball or you're gonna overspin it, it's not even gonna go over, okay? Really bad, don't start twisting your wrist until you make contact with the ball. Other than that, here's a couple more beginner mistakes. Do not swing across your body. Do not swing across your body. This is the big illusory thing that a lot of people who've never played tennis think that's going off the slice. They think you're slicing across your body. No, what's going on is the arm is straight, but then the body turns. And that creates the illusion that you're slicing across your body. But as you can see, my racket is still on the right side of my body. It's not across my body. It is nowhere across this center line here, okay? All slices are straight. All slices are straight, not across the body, okay? Is there dumb stroke shit that you can do like that later when you get better, like, like that? Yes, but as far as the regular slice stroke goes, that's not what you're doing. Slice form that you're gonna be using for everything is always keeping the slice stroke on this right side of your body, keeping it straight and not unlocking the bend and pointing forwards. This is very, very bad. Good sign that you slice correctly is that your racket face is open and pointed to the right and that's all there is to step three, the swing. Now I'm going to move into the second half of the video where I show you how to hit high slices, where I show you how to control the direction of your slices, where I show you how to control the depth, and finally how to amplify your slice so that you can hit it really hard and add more spin to it but not overhit it and have it out. It's literally going to be curving in the air and then bounces off and takes off. Okay, and That's going to be all the way at the end of the video. But for now, let's move on to the next part, which is high forehand slices. All right, high forehand slices. Explaining this is literally going to take like 30 seconds, but I wish my coach in the past explained to me how to tackle these. There's going to be basically three differences. The first one, again, this literally comes from the high volley video is you're going to take your racket back high and yes, you're going to chop down and go up, but you're going to stay up here. So many people miss their high volleys and high slices because they chop down. Okay? You ever get a high volley here and then you just, just goes in the net? It's because you went down. All slices without exception, chop down, go up. You can't be missing the part where your forearm pushes up. That's number one. Number two is you're gonna do these in open stance. If you go into closed stance, it's going to be very hard. If you go into closed stance, but you're off on your position a little bit, it's gonna be very hard to handle these. I get that if you're going into the court and then you go into closed stance and take it, yeah. But if you're off in your position a little bit in closed stance, you won't be able to take the ball. You want to take these in open stance because open stance gives you the affordability to be out of position. Does that mean close stance is wrong? No. Does that mean you should never go close stance? No. But for most of these, and especially again, we're assuming you're at the baseline, not hitting a slice as an approach shot, then you want to take it open stance. And finally, the third change that we're going to make here is the grip is going to be five degrees flatter. So don't think about the number, just know you're going to have a slightly flatter slice grip. Not a completely flat grip, a slightly flatter slice grip because we can barely get underneath the ball when it's high. So the only thing we can do to make sure it lands deep is give it more depth. A flatter grip gives you more depth. Don't believe me? Here's a 90 degree topspin grip. Boom, it does, does not go over the net. Now let's go flatter. Boom, it goes over the net. Wow, gives it more depth when you have a flatter grip. Same thing applies to your slices, okay? So five degrees slice grip, open stance, stay up there, boom. Five degree slice grip, open stance, stay up there, boom. Second one landed way deeper, look at that. Okay, let's compare the regular slice to the high slice. Three regular slices. One, two, three, okay, high slice. Change my grip a little bit. Here we go. One, two, three. As you can see, again, the moment of impact is off to my side and high right here. The, low, the moment of impact for the regular volley, same side distance, but lower. Okay, so I'm taking my racket back really high, down, up, down, up, taking my racket back straight to the right, down, really down low, and then up, down, up. Okay, so regular slice, high slice. The high slice looks way straighter than the low slice. Now, another question you might have is, 
when you see the pros do this, it definitely looks like their racket is going down. Sometimes a guy hits the ball so hard that it knocks your racket down. So when you watch pro tennis and you see that pros are volleying or hitting high slices and it looks like they're chopping down, they're not. The ball is knocking their racket down. That's not the same as you applying force down. The ball's still going up as long as you are pushing up and that's how you hit high forehand slices. All right, now controlling direction of the forehand slice. Same as in the topspin forehand video, same as in the topspin backhand video. Fundamentally, what affects where the ball is going to go is your impact timing. Are you taking the ball later, in the middle, or sooner? And the question is, how do you set those timings up? There are three things that hierarchically determine that. Number one is your, where your stance is pointing. If you're an open stance, you can go straight ahead, cross court, and then slightly adjust your open stance to the right to go inside out, opposite if you're left-handed, obviously. But basically, open stance optimizes directional control, closed stance optimizes power. So how we're going to control direction differs based off what stance we're in, but fundamentally, if you're in open stance, you can basically hit the ball wherever you want, and if you're in closed stance, you have to point your closed stance. So then, after we've gotten the stance taken care of, once we choose the stance, again, for the slice, you can be in open stance, closed stance if you're stepping in, or a sliding closed stance if you're keeping your position and taking the ball on the fall to give it more power. Now, once you've set your stance, then it's time to turn your body in order to meet the ball where you want to. Okay, so if I want to go inside out, if I'm staying in open stance, I'm going to turn my body way, way more to the right, and then I'm going to swing, or I should say chop down, push up, over to the right. And again, my swing stays straight for slices, for volleys, for both of those, okay? If I want to go straight ahead, I'm going to turn my body a little bit less, and then turn back straight. So at the end, my body's facing straight. And now if I want to go cross court, then I turn my body less back, but go more cross court. Or you can turn your body still really far back, Make sure that by the end, your body's facing cross court. So let's start with the open stance example. Open stance, I want to go inside out. I might go in a little bit of a half open stance here where my open stance is facing to the right. And boom, send the ball inside out. Now I want to send the ball straight ahead. Look at my foot. Okay, I'm open stance, regular open stance now. Drag it back. Boom. Okay, I'm not going across my body. I'm turning my body. See how there's this illusion that the slices are going across your body when they're not. And finally, let's go cross court. Turn my body. Boom. Look at where my body's facing. I'm facing you guys and I'm facing the camera. So that's open stance. Now let's go to the sliding close stance together. Okay? Sliding close stance. I'm going to point my stance way more over to the right and then swing as I slide, okay? So inside out. There we go. Straight ahead. There we go. So I put my foot in different spots depending on where I want to hit the ball. When I went inside out, I took my foot over to the right. Okay. When I went straight ahead, I took my foot straight ahead. When I went cross court, I took my foot cross court. Okay. So we have inside out, straight ahead, cross court, and then you slide your foot respectively. Okay. So we can get that hip turn to increase the length of the swing. And then finally, you want to close stance except for closing forwards, not the regular closed stance where we take one foot back, one foot in front. This is closing into an open stance. This is the dynamic stance of moving forwards. It's the same thing. We close in the direction we want to hit the ball. Okay? So we close. Boom. Inside out. Close straight ahead. Boom. And close cross court. Okay? Your stance sets up the total angle that your body can turn. And your body can turn pretty much 180 degrees, but it's going to be 180 degrees this way. 180 degrees over here. My stance is responsible for that. Okay, and then finally, you can make small adjustments in your swing to change direction, but that's the last thing you want to change when it comes to slicing. The reason you want slices to be so straight is so you can keep the maximum amount of power focused in that direction, and that's how you control the direction of your slices. All right, controlling depth of the forehand slices, same as our other ground stroke videos. The drill that we use here is mini tennis, and how you achieve it regulate your throwing power, which isn't that hard already for slices. So slices have a low power threshold. Again, power threshold is how hard you can hit the ball before it goes out. A low power threshold means a high upfront power. Upfront power is the opposite of power threshold. It means how much power you already get 
up front, okay? So it's a very simple definition. So even though this is going to be a really short part of the video right here, you still want to practice your slices a lot in mini tennis. It's going to help get you a feel for one of the most important shots in tennis, which is the drop shot, okay? And serious inquiry here, how do you hit drop shots? Well, first of all, the opportunity has to be right. The best shot to hit a drop shot on is any shot that's on the rise or if you're already close to the net. You can do whatever you want with the ball. So ineffective shots, yes, you can hit a drop shot on. An ineffective shot, and this is fundamental stuff, you can also check out that entire online course that I created that tells you all of the fundamental terminology to tennis, unprecedented stuff here that literally explains why every single stroke looks the way it does and why all tennis mechanics work the way that they do without needing separate instructions for everything. An ineffective shot is a shot that doesn't unground your opponent. So if you get something easy, yeah, it's a drop shot. And this mini tennis um, slice drill is going to help with working on your drop shots in those situations too. Basically, anytime you get a ball on the rise, you're going to want to hit a drop shot, okay? So a low forehand slice on the rise or a high forehand slice on the rise. The better one is the high forehand slice on the rise because it already has so much height and literally all you have to do is send it back and it drops, okay? Again, it's already high, send it back and it drops, okay? Now the reason that the lower one is still a good option but it's harder is now you have to send that ball up. Okay? You have to send it up. Like this one even I struggle with, okay? You have to send it up. But you can still drop this one. That requires having really good depth control, which is again what we're doing here. So three situations you can hit drop shots, which is the utility of this drill and of working on slices during mini tennis. Is number one, a really ineffective shot. Basically a, a ball that's just hanging out there. Okay? For two is either a low or a high ball on the rise where the high one is the best one. You see this? You can drop it anywhere and it's going to drop sharp. It's going to drop sharp. The most effective drop shots are the ones that are also the easiest, which is that one right there on the rise and high. You drop those, you learn how to drop those, and you, you, the point's over. Like almost guaranteed point is over. And then the second best option is on the rise. Then the second best option is on the rise low, okay? Where you have to give it a little bit of height. I miss these ones way more. As you can see, I'm missing that, that myself. But you can still drop the ball in this situation. Boom, there we go, we got it right there. And that's how you control the depth of your forehand slices. Control how much you are pushing your forearm. So if you guys have played paddle ball, I know thinking is a big thing in paddle ball. This is basically the same thing right here. Okay, let's move on to the next section. All right, finally, the last part of the video where I show you how to hit an enhanced forehand slice, an amplified forehand slice. Okay, so check it out. Regular forehand slice, boom, looks nice, right? Now amplified, spends a little bit more time flying in the air and it has more spin on it, okay? Well, let's look at it again, regular, okay? And amplified, there you go. Now you can see a little bit more of a difference with that one. But as you can see, I hit the second one harder, but it still went in. So the question is, how do we do that? How do we add more spin and power to the slice but so that it drops in, but it still has like more side spin, bounces like crazy? Basically, it's, it's way superior to the normal forehand slice. And the answer is, you add your chest and you add your shoulder, okay? So practice this. In racket back, get a feeling for rotating your shoulder. Okay, get a feeling for rotating your shoulder in racket back, okay? And get a feeling for this chest here. If you've done bench presses, you, you already know what the feeling is here, okay? So when you add rotating your shoulder forwards to compressing your chest a little bit, and then add that to the chop down push up, that's how you add more power. See that thing just bounce sideways, okay? That's how you add more power and spin to the backhand slice. Again, more chest, rotate the shoulder forwards, and then chop down push up. Okay, and you're putting all those together. I'm separating again, okay, more chest. So I'm closing my chest here, rotate the ch um, shoulder forward, chop down, push up. And then we put it all together, and boom. The ball's gonna have more air time, but that doesn't mean you're giving your opponent more time because then the ball skids and the ball bounces sideways, giving you a really effective slice. This works even well 
and especially for some drop shots where you have a little bit more room to send it a little bit deeper, especially let's say if you're going at an angle here, especially let's say I'm hitting this inside out, like literally it's, and that ball really just turns. That's enhanced, now regular slice. Okay, that regular slice is really straight. It's really nothing, okay? Regular slice again. Yeah, that's nice and all, but the guy's gonna get to it. Let's enhance it. And boom, it bounces to the side a little bit. And that's the end of the video right there. I hope you learned not only just how to slice, but how to how and when to hit drop shots, um, how to control direction, just, just basically everything with the slice across the board, especially that enhanced slice right there. Now you know what muscle groups to work on in order to actually strengthen this slice right here because this isn't some stroke. And again, like I, you want to figure out how to learn the regular forehand slice before you enhance it, before you start enhancing. You have to start with the building blocks first before we get to the more advanced stuff. But I still want you guys to know everything about the slices and the volleys off the bat. That's how you do it right there. If you learned a lot from this video, again, like I said at the beginning, put a lot of work in setting all this stuff up, editing it, so I would hugely appreciate it. At no cost to you, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment down below, share this video. It helps get the algorithm to push these videos out to even more tennis players so we can get to 1K subs and meet that 4,000 hour watch time and get this channel monetized. And also, if you feel like dropping a few dollars to up your fashion game, go ahead and check out our online store. And if you feel like donating to help the project, to help the organization, consider donating to our Patreon. All the links to all that stuff down in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again for our next lesson.